and I hope uh, you are excited as I am to be part of uh, this first demo week showcasing the startups funded by uh, the Silicon Valley Innovation Program. Uh, SVIP is already working with the Coast Guard to find technology solutions for two pressing issues that I will talk about later. But I also hope to provide some insight about the Coast Guard missions, our technology needs uh, for better mission execution. I certainly offer caution as I start here is that I view all of you as potential partners in tackling the Coast Guard and DHS's toughest challenges, and we seem to get them all the time. Uh, today's theme is border and maritime security, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. You may not be aware of this, but the Coast Guard has been actively involved in homeland and maritime security from our founding 231 years ago. And that was back in 1790 when the Revenue Cutter Service was created to protect the nation's economy through the enforcement of tariff and trade laws and the prevention of smuggling. Conversely, we are just ramping up our use of artificial intelligence and machine learning. The Coast Guard is sometimes quick at adapting to today's ever-changing world, but we realize we can't always do it on our own. That's certainly the case. I'm glad you're all here today. It is certainly becoming increasingly necessary to use advanced technology to ensure our mission success. That's why we're grateful for programs such as SVIP, which are designed to promote partnerships with industry so we can work together to develop solutions that meet the Coast Guard's specific needs. I'd like to thank SVIP, the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate for their vital support. Uh, next slide, Melissa. It would be difficult to find someone who hasn't heard about the Coast Guard in reference to search and rescue or disaster response. And quite honestly, that's why I joined 30 years ago. Uh, for example, there's been extensive media coverage recently of our humanitarian relief efforts following the recent earthquake in Haiti. But maritime response is only one fact, or is, is the fact only one of six operational mission programs the Coast Guard currently covers. There's also maritime law enforcement, which includes missions such as drug interdiction and the suppression of transnational organized crime, as well as a growing concern over illegal, unreported and unregulated or IUU fishing. There's also maritime transportation system management and maritime prevention missions that safeguard the efficient and economical movement of $5.4 trillion in overall economic activity flowing through our nation's ports and waterways. Our most common efforts in these area, areas include marine inspection of both foreign and domestic vessels and our aids to navigation mission, which is critical to helping mariners navigate inland and coastal waterways. Marine environmental protection missions also fall into this category, which range from checking out a small oil sheen following the sinking of a pleasure boat to our current investigation of more than 1,500 reports of pollution following the recent hurricane Ida landfall in the Gulf of Mexico. Next slide. Under the Maritime Security Operations Domain, the Coast Guard works to detect deter, prevent, and disrupt terrorism attacks and other criminal acts in the U.S. maritime domain. Inspections at our ports are just one way we keep our nation safe. And through our defense operation, the Coast Guard is deployed around the globe to help the U.S. security by joining forces, forces with other partner nations. As an example of the need for this mission is China's new rule requiring all foreign ships earning what it claims is the South China Sea to register its ships and cargo information with the Chinese maritime authorities. Claims such as, as this pose a threat to free navigation, free trade, and unimpeded lawful commerce that affects the U.S. lives and livelihoods, even though it seems so far away. Another example of our current effort to station six new fast response cutters in Bahrain to serve with wow. patrol forces Southwest Asia. These new assets will allow the Coast Guard to seamlessly integrate with the Navy and Marine Corps team to facilitate trade and free ocean options in the areas outlined in the Tri-Service Maritime Strategy. Our Coast Guard Commandant, Admiral Carl Schultz, calls it a mindset where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. When referring to the greater naval, naval integration in all the things in the face of threat on it. So I'll take a break uh, real quick. I think we might have an open mic. All right, thank you. Um, when Admiral Schultz became the uh, 26th Commandant of the Coast Guard, he charged us with being ready, relevant, and responsive in our efforts to serve a nation whose economic prosperity, national security, and global influence are linked to the maritime domain. 
This video, this following video, and I hope you like this, uh, illustrates how we fulfill our obligations and certainly gives you a snapshot of our diverse mission set. Next slide, please. Great. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, that's really why I'm still in the Coast Guard, quite, quite frankly. Um, but uh, do you want a simpler picture of what the Coast Guard does? Uh, th this following table really tells what the Coast Guard accomplishes on an average day. And you can certainly see by the wide range and sheer work the, the Coast Guard completes every day. So it's obvious that we look, look for ways to execute those missions more efficiently and effectively. On top of that, a large percentage of the bad actors we encounter are well-financed and are using cutting edge technology. So you can see why it's imperative that the Coast Guard not fall behind. At the Coast Guard, our research, development, testing, evaluation, and innovation program is the lead in our efforts to identify risks and explore opportunities to continually advance the service. Next slide, please. So looking at our most urgent needs the past few years, we have established the seven research priorities to guide our future uh, projects and uh, priority advancement. The first one is advancing computer capabilities. The second is continuing the development of mobile solutions. And these mobile solutions address the need for real-time information in the offshore environment the Coast Guard is challenged with, but we also need to have connectivity to use those devices. That certainly is a challenge for those those offshore. The third is utilizing autonomous systems. The Coast Guard is part of an interagency working group for all unmanned systems or UXS. Unmanned system technologies enable the Coast Guard to extend asset capabilities and trade off costs and performance compared to current legacy assets. The fourth is strengthening the resilience, safety, and security of Coast Guard systems and personnel so we can deliver mission, mission excellence anytime, anywhere. The fifth is uh, developing human machine teaming. This has huge potential as a force multiplier. The sixth is enhancing C5I capa capabilities. And if you aren't familiar with the C5I term, for the Coast Guard, it means command control, communications, computer, cyber, and intelligence. This is especially important in the new space domain where we work with technologies such as cube satellites. And the last, the seventh, is developing service solutions to climate change impacts. We continue to expand our climate research focus priority. We're also working to accomplish DHS uh, direction 
to leverage shared application utility and interoperability across DHS agencies. Sounds, sounds like things any successful business might be looking into. I am sure you would find that uh, to be the case, but the Coast Guard needs are a little more complex. Let's go to the next slide, please. The, uh, sim the simplest example is the drone. When the Coast Guard uh, started looking into unmanned aircraft systems, there were plenty to choose from, but they were mainly designed to fly short distances over dry land, not over the miles of open ocean that we cover on many of our maritime patrols. Uh, growing international interest and increased resource exploration, shipping and tourism in the polar regions are creating a greater demand for the Coast Guard presence there to protect US national security, environmental and economic interests but it isn't as simple as sending a few more cutters. The severe conditions cause challenging situations specific to the region. Just try and imagine the ice buildup on a vessel windows as the sea spray freezes on everything it touches. And if too much ice builds up, the ship becomes unsafe to operate. And I've been there, this picture you see here is I've seen on my bridge windows in my own ship multiple times. Also, if something breaks, we, we can't get next day delivery of the necessary part uh, and with the lack of reliable communications caused by this harsh environment, we might not even be able to get a message out. So cyberspace also represents the newest operational domain for our service. The Coast Guard is now working to secure the cyber train and the maritime transportation system to stop bad actors from crippling vital shipping interests. These are the type of challenges the Coast Guard must find answers for, but I know you are up for the challenge. Now focusing on a topic of, our day, of the day, on AI and ML front, the Coast Guard is currently working to align with Artificial Intelligence and Marine Learning Strategic Plan released in August, 2021 by the DHS ST. Next slide, please. Artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities could be game changers for timely decision-making in the Coast Guard mission set. In the fight against illegal, unreported, and unregulated or IUU fishing, for example, the Coast Guard RD t &E program is exploring ways to use unmanned systems to increase awareness of what is occurring in remote waters. But all the data in the world doesn't have any value unless we have the means to quickly and accurately analyze it. We must be able to see the patterns so we can determine appropriate courses of actions to stop the threat. In another potential use, the Coast Guard is partnering with the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center to leverage AI for predictive maintenance capabilities. We want to be able to be better manage the large amount of mission data available so we can more effectively maintain our aircraft. AI also has the potential to support a wide range of Coast Guard missions, such as environmental protection, law enforcement, ICE operations, drug, migrant, in, drug and migrant interdiction, defense readiness, ports and waterway security, aids to navigation, and search and rescue. AI, AI can be that force multiplier now, that eye in the ocean, as well as provide indicators of future needs. And the ability to harness and analyze that data will be a powerful tool for decision makers. On the machine learning side, the Defense Innovation Unit and Global Fishing Watch have launched the, the XView 3 Challenge Prize Competition to help the Coast Guard in its fight against IUU fishing. They are looking for machine learning algorithms that can automatically detect and characterize dark vessels. Vessels that do not publicly broadcast their location or appear in public monitoring systems using satellite-based synthetic aperture radar images. We recently used, uh, next slide, please. We, we recently used our interactive crowdsourcing platform to get workforce ideas on how to incorporate AI and ML learning to Coast Guard, to support Coast Guard missions. AI, ML technologies have huge impacts, uh, potential in human resources, operations, maintenance, and logistics. Our research and development center chose a potential use case of, of Rescue 21 for a proof of concept study, working with IBM Watson's speech, uh, speech to text engine to transcribe our Rescue 21 audio data files. Other projects are also in the works. I promise I'd also talk about our current projects with SBIP. Two of the presenters today are startups working to adapt existing technologies to address specific Coast Guard needs. Next slide, please. The first is for a maritime object tracking technology, which will allow the Coast Guard responders to accurately mark and monitor objects in the water for recovery later. The most obvious use is 
for this is during drug interdiction missions when packages are thrown from the suspect vessel during high speed pursuit. This technology would make it easier to recover the items later so they can be used as ev evidence in prosecuting the criminals and prevent drugs from washing up on beach beaches. Once perfected, the technology also has the potential for applications such as water, uh, waterway security, disaster response, and search and rescue missions. The second technology being demonstrated today involves real-time language translations, so Coast Guard boarding teams can communicate accurately with non-English speakers, which is critical for the safety and security of both Coast Guard operators and vessel occupants. Offline capability is a specific need for the Coast Guard in this case, since many of our interactive interactions take place in the high, speed, high seas in extreme environmental conditions and in locations without cell service or internet connections. Next slide. So I really hope you enjoyed today's discussion, demos, and learning a little bit more about the uh, Coast Guard. And I hope you will consider partnering with the Coast Guard to help us harness technology to increase our efficiency and effectiveness in our daily activities. Thank you and look forward to that many of your technologies be an integral part of tomorrow's DHS and Coast Guard. Now, Ron, uh, back to you. Thank you. Thank you.